Hello everyone and welcome back to the Wad Charts YouTube channel. I'm Hamza and today I want to discuss with you what I think is a great watch and I want you to try and picture this along with me. It's in stainless steel. It has an integrated stainless steel bracelet, but the bracelet has quick release, so if you want to use if you want to interchange with rubber or leather straps, um, with pin buckles or with deploying clasps, you have that option. Stylistically, it's a sports watch. So it's got large luminescent indexes and hands. So it's very legible and very easy to read. And it's got a blue dial. So far, what I'm describing is a watch that I think a lot of us would say, yeah, that sounds very attractive. I would want that. OK, so let me keep going. 41 millimeter case. It's only 12.6 millimeters tall. It's water resistant to 50 meters. And it houses an in-house movement that runs at a thoroughly modern 4 hertz. And two more things. Ready? OK, so it's got a display case back with a solid gold skeletonized rotor. And it's got a perpetual calendar complication. Power reserve is the only thing that's a little bit of a setback on this. Like, it's hamstrung at only 38 hours. But picture the watch. Tell me you're not feeling a certain level of excitement about what I've just described. Now, what if I told you that this watch was made in 2022 by a Swiss watch brand and was listed for only $4,000 on Reddit this week? That's exactly what I found when I opened up Watch Arts and was just randomly looking at watches for sale earlier this week. And I came across this listing for a Frederick Constant High Life Perpetual Calendar listed for only $4,000. And it still had 18 months of warranty left on it. The retail price of this watch is $9,895. It was listed for $4,000 uh, in the US. The seller was highly reputable, had 20 positive rep, and it was being sold as a complete set and six additional rubber and leather interchangeable OEM straps. So if you can recall a few weeks ago in the podcast when we were talking about mid-level watch brands and we talked about the watches that offer the greatest uh, degree of mechanical interestingness for under uh, $10,000, my submission was the two-toned version of this watch, which comes in at $9,995. But the stainless steel version is actually nicer because it has the blue dial uh, that actually looks quite nice. And this is exactly that same watch. So everything that I said about why this is incredible bang for the buck applies, but now at a price that's less than half of what uh, it was when I was trying to make the case for why this was the most mechanically interesting watch uh, under $10,000. I think the biggest drawback with this watch really is just what the name is on the dial. And that explains why it was available on the second market at such a discount. But it's not something I really understand. I I'm not quite sure why uh, accessible watchmaking of this sort that provides high horology complications at affordable price points can't be celebrated and can't be more desirable than it is. I mean, I think for somebody who's looking for a deal, this is a is, this is a great purchase. But just as an enthusiast, I think the reason that you know we're able to have something like like this be available on the secondary market is because its perceived value is is far less than what its inherent value is, according to the people who make the watch. And so if you want to try and buy this, unfortunately, the only forum listing um, that I saw that was listed three days ago has already sold. I am not the person who bought it, even though I did very seriously consider going that route. Uh, but, but it has sold because I think it was an amazing price. And if you go and look on eBay, there are no listings for this watch. If you go and look on Chrono24, the watch is available from a few dealers, but what you'll notice is that the price is uh, considerably higher. Uh, the cheapest listings that I've been able to see start at around $6,000, and those aren't even based in the U.S., and so shipping and customs and all of that sort of nonsense would, would cost even more to get, the uh, to get the watch moved over here. And the reason I think there is such a discrepancy is because this is not a watch that is highly desirable. And so that means that uh, dealers are less likely to want to stock it. And because dealers are less likely to stock it, if you really try and keep an eye out for a listing on the private market, I definitely find a better price. 
So for me, this watch was interesting to talk about because even though I came very close to deciding to pull the trigger, I ultimately chickened out. But I'm curious if some of you would not have done that. Because if you think about what you can get for this amount of money, for $4,000, there's two comparable uh, complication or quote-unquote complication watches that, that I can compare this to. At 41 millimeters and with just a travel time complication, the Tudor Black Bay GMT retails for $4,175 and is 14.6 millimeters tall, has um, you know considerably more water resistance, but far, far, far less complication. And in terms of brand reputation at this price point, I don't really know certainly when you're comparing $4,000 against $4,175, why somebody would be swayed by the Tudor name, really, uh, in, in this particular instance. Unless, you know, it's your first watch and da-da-da, and, you know, that's th those are sort of some of the considerations. And then the other watch, which is actually a far more interesting comparison, is the Christopher Ward C1 Bel Canto. This is sold out. This is not available anymore, but it's also a 41-millimeter uh, watch on a bracelet in titanium, but that has a very, very interesting chiming complication, which if you enable it, chimes the hour on the hour every hour. And so, you know, it's not that this is the only sort of complication that you can get at this price point, but I think it's even an amazing fact to consider that we are talking about all of these variations of complications being available for relatively such little money when you start talking about high horology. So, the chase is part of the fun of the watch collecting experience, and this has been my story about a watch that I thought about chasing but ultimately chickened out. If you have interesting stories like this to share, we would love to hear them. Thanks for listening.